the Phil Travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here in Rincon, Puerto Rico for the don'ts of visiting Puerto Rico. And my first don't for you really could start before you come to Puerto Rico or right when you get here, and that is don't be afraid to ask the locals what to do. Look, people from Puerto Rico love Puerto Rico. You'll see the flags flying everywhere. You'll feel the pride they have in their country, whether they're still living in Puerto Rico or if they're living in the U.S. or around the world. And what's great is they will share their tips for you. They'll let you know where their uncles live and their aunties live. They're going to help you out. They'll set up a driver for you. They'll tell you, oh, this is the best place for Monfongo. Oh, if you want to get lechon, you got to go to the Ruta de Lechon and go eat it there because that's the best way. Get it by the pounds because you're going to love it. I mean, you see how happy I am? Because my Puerto Rican friends, our Puerto Rican fans, I just mentioned we're thinking of going to Puerto Rico and the outpouring of support, the outpouring of ideas, place to go is amazing. So don't forget to ask. Don't be worried to ask. And when you get here, the people are super friendly. So they will help you as well. And that's really, really wonderful. But there's something I need to kind of tell you when you come here is don't just blindly speak English when you're here, okay? Puerto Rico, yes, they have two official languages, Spanish and English, okay? So you can get by in both pretty much everywhere. But I'm going to tell you, just because it's a U.S. territory doesn't mean everybody speaks English here, especially if you get outside of like San Juan or here in Rincon or any of the big tourist areas. Spanish is much more prevalent. English is a lot less happening. So do be aware of that. So practice your Spanish before you come. Even if you just you know learn a few words, gracias is thank you, por favor is please, si is yes. Just doing that like just makes people so happy and much more welcoming. I mean, they're already welcoming, but just trying a little Spanish, like lo siento, no hablo español. I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Will help people out. And if it's in tourism, they'll know. They'll switch to English, no problem, or they'll just start in English with you. So don't worry about it, but just realize that you do need uh, some Spanish when you are here, especially if you're going more inland and not by the tourist places, okay? So don't just go blindly in English. Do practice some of that Spanish when you're here. And even if you don't speak Spanish and the people you meet might not speak English really well, they'll still give you that advice I was talking about before. Now, a kind of a more serious don't I have when you do come here is I said, this is a U.S. territory. And I would say, don't get into the political talk about Puerto Rico is, you know, it's statehood or it's territory or independence. That discussion, it's a really deep issue for the people of Puerto Rico. And I'm not from here. You're not from here. You don't understand what this means to them. You know, they're conquered by Spain, conquered by the U.S. I mean, there's a lot to unpack for the Puerto Rican people here. And you as a tourist, come and enjoy the beautiful ocean or the beautiful, you know, beaches, the bioluminescence bays or the fantastic food that's here. You can't possibly, we can't possibly understand that. So I do kind of recommend not getting into that topic when you are here just to avoid any any headaches because you know i mean if you want to talk about it just just mention hey i've noticed like places like rincon a lot of mainlanders have moved here and that could lead into a discussion as well so so just be aware of that but nothing bad is going to really happen to you i, I think the the, the, bad, the bad that might happen to you when you're here is my next don't for you and that is don't forget to be defensive with your driving when you're here in puerto rico because people drive more on the aggressive side a bit when you are here so be ready for some quick lane changes and stops really quick and people going oh i forgot my exit and pulling over and then with all the tourists that are here not knowing where they're going i mean there's a lot of things you need to kind of consider when you're driving here so just be ready for it i mean if you're if you're coming from a big city like a chicago or new york you'll be fine but if you're you know a small town guy like myself be ready for it and and, and just know that just because you're a tourist, don't think that will get you out of a ticket. But I will say the police officer that gave us a ticket by Isabella was very nice. The people at the Isabella Town Hall, where we paid our, our multa, our fine, were wonderful. Okay, so be aware from that. A couple of the other don'ts I have when you're driving around. Don't forget to get the toll pass just to save yourself the headache. Um, a lot of the rental agencies might have it already included in there, but it's important to ask about it. And yeah, don't think because you didn't see the sign that that's an excuse not to get a ticket for speeding, uh, just FYI. But I think for the signage, another don't I have for you is don't get confused by the signage uh, when it comes to driving around because the mile markers are actually in kilometers and the distance to the exits are in kilometers. But the speed limit is in miles per hour, okay? So do be aware of that. And you'll see how sometimes that can be a little confusing, but if you know it, it's a little bit more helpful. Another important don't to go with those kilometers and miles thing is, don't forget that the gas is actually priced in liters, not in gallons. Because I know if you're thinking gallons, that's a great price, but no, take that times 3.75, that gives you the per gallon price. So they sell by a liter. So uh, 
yeah, just just know that. Though, honestly, the gas prices here are pretty similar to what we pay in Illinois, so not a big deal there. Now, if you're planning a trip here to Puerto Rico, one thing I had to say is don't skip out one of the bioluminescent bays here in Puerto Rico. There's three of like five in the world where you like kayak in the water and it glows behind you. You put your hand and shake it and it kind of glows or do a boat tour and see that. There's three here in Puerto Rico. One is about an hour and a half south of here in the southwest corner of the island. Another one's in the northeast corner of the island. You can go up there. That's probably the easiest one if you're in San Juan to go visit. And then there's one out on one of the islands. You can go see that's Mosquito Bay. That's probably the best one to do. But do go one and don't skip out on it because it really is amazing. But I got to tell you, don't forget to book it in advance because if you're here on weekends or during high tourist season, those tours, those kayak tours, those boat tours, those swimming through a tours, they do book up. So that can be a problem. Also, don't forget that the moon has a big part of it. New moon is better than the full moon. All right. Now let's let, let's get back to some of the really, really important stuff when you come to Puerto Rico, the food. OK. And one thing I got to say is don't feel bad if you buy your lechon by the pound, okay? Lechon is suckling roast pig. And you'll see some of the kioscos, they're like little huts on the side of the road that they'll be selling them. There's actually a ruta del lechon, a pork, uh, the root of the pork, I guess, that you can go to and, and just get lechon. And it's so good. And the thing is, is you might see pernil, which is another form of pork, with your mofongo or other foods, but, but lechon, like shown as the bomb like that's you got to have that when you're here and yes you do order by the pound so do enjoy it because you'll be pounding it down because it's so good okay but another donut have food with the food is don't be anti-plantain look plantains you know the rub of the banana they're super popular here they come on a lot of things you might have tostones for a start which is a which is a plantain that's fried then smashed and fried again like kind of like not a chip but like a smushed like I guess you'd call it like a banana hash brown almost. It's sometimes about toppings on that. That's a really wonderful starter. Or you have amarillas, which is like a sweet fried banana, which is, oh, those are delightful. I love those. You get those as a side sometimes. I mean, I had a plantain stuffed with seafood at one of the places we went to eat. So plantains will pop up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So just, just be ready for that when you see it in your, on the menu because the biggest one is mofongo. Mofongo is the Puerto Rican dish. When people think of Puerto Rican food, they think of mofongo. And what it is, it's those plantains, they're fried and smashed and they kind of forms into, you'll see it like a, a dome kind of. Sometimes they'll put the like steak, skirt steak or, or camarones, um, shrimp in there, or chicken. They'll put, I mean, the stewed meat in there. It's so good. Sometimes it's on the side, the fancy place is on top. But if you're like roadside place, you'll be happy with what you get. But mofongo and the plantains, that's what makes the bowl so good so good that's one thing you really got to have and one thing is i know when you come to you know the caribbean and you go in central america you'll notice that rice and beans are very popular i'm going to tell you here in puerto rico don't mix the rice and beans when you serve them now you have your rice and they'll bring you a bowl of beans and you might share that with the person next to you at the restaurant like like at your table not like some random dude okay and, but you'll like scoop your own beans and put it on they don't just put it together so if you're making dinner for your puerto rican friends do not mix those beans together. Also, what I found interesting was it's not black beans either. Now, another thing I think you need to realize in terms of when you eat here is I would say this, don't get in a hurry with your food. Whether you're going out for drinks, whether you're going out for snacks, just getting some tostones, or you're going out to go eat, like at a restaurant, service speed is not fast here. They're preparing the food. A lot of times, maybe there's only one person or two people cooking in the back. You gotta have patience when you're here. Remember, we're on an island island time relax when you're here enjoy puerto rico but you do need to realize that it's going to take some time to get your food sometimes so if you have kids i might actually get a starter like empanadilla which are like little half moon stuffed pastries which well yeah it's just they're wonderful just get them okay there's meat chicken seafood the kids my kids have loved them too give them a, an appetizer to kind of tie them while you're waiting for your food just to be aware of that i also think another important thing to mention is you're coming to puerto rico don't think Puerto Rico is going to be cheap. One, the locals will be like, dude, it's not cheap. And, and me as a, as a mainlander coming here, going out to eat in Puerto Rico is like, you know, if you're in San Juan, it's like going out to eat in Chicago in terms of the prices. Here in Rincon, it's like going and eating out of my hometown. I'm not saving a ton of cash coming to Puerto Rico, okay? So don't think it's going to be cheap. Now, I'm not saying it's super expensive either, but don't think this is going to be a cheap thing to do. So just be aware of that when you are booking things, whether you're going to do one of the bioluminescent space, you're going to go out to eat, you'll notice that your wallet doesn't think it's as cheap as you might think it is. Okay. So, but there are deals you can get. That's why I always say, yo, go eat those kiosks, 
and the kiosk goes and stuff and, and that can help you save a bit, but just be aware. But one of the things you can do to kind of save money when you're here is don't skip out at eating one of the kioscos, one of the little stands you'll see. I mean, they have them from sliders and hamburgers and stuff to, to seafood. And sometimes those places do have better prices than restaurants, but don't feel weird going, hmm, should I be eating at one of these stands? Yes, yes, you should. The food is fantastic there, okay? So, so don't worry about it. You'll see little food trucks around too you can enjoy those. And another don't I have for you is don't forget to bring your US dollars because this is a US territory and the US dollar is the currency here. And so when you are here, do bring some cash with you. There's ATMs a lot of places where you can get cash out, but sometimes it's just easy to bring it with you. Um, one thing I'll say, you can use credit cards a lot of places when you're here that hasn't been a problem. American Express occasionally has been problematic, but Visa and MasterCard, not a big deal. But if you're gonna be going to those kioscos and buying your lechon, you know, like, have cash to pay some of these things because some places are more of a cash-based business and also it makes things a lot faster and paying. So do be aware of that. And hey, if you're coming from the US, don't forget that this is a domestic flight if you're coming from the US. So you don't need your passport if you're a US citizen. You can fly with your driver's license here if you're from the US. So that can be really helpful. So if you don't want to go get a passport, but you want to get kind of a, a, an international experience and, and see some beautiful stuff, come to Puerto Rico. And when you're coming to Puerto Rico, there's a couple things you don't want to forget. Don't forget to bring your sunblock, your bug spray, and some kind of sun protection like hats or whatever. I mean, you can get it all over here. There's Walgreens here. You can go to the store and pick it up, but I find it's cheaper at home because remember island time, island prices, okay? Bring it from home, you have it. If you got little kids, you can get the beach stuff here, but if there's a couple beach toys, bring it with you just to save a little money if you want, but you can pick it up all here. Uh, one thing I will say, if you do go to the restaurants, don't forget to tip. If you go to a restaurant, 15 to 20% is the tip you're gonna leave to your restaurant server, okay? This isn't, oh, I'll leave them a dollar. No, 15 to 20%, okay? That's what you tip here. If you're at the bar and you're getting drinks, leave a buck per drink for your bartender, okay? Your guides, you wanna be tipping them as well. This is part US territory, so the tipping culture is here as well. That's how they're making their money. You know, so do be aware of it. And that was a specific don't that some of the uh, waiters and waitresses here wanted me to say for international travelers coming here because a lot of them don't think they need to tip, but you do need to tip when you are here in Puerto Rico. Now let's talk about some of the fun things you're going to do when you're here. One, obviously don't miss out on the beaches when you're here. And there are beaches, I mean the whole island all around has amazing beaches, but don't forget to check the water before you go because there are riptides and we are on the north coast and really rough waves. And there'll be signs saying, don't go in the water. It's not for swimming. It's just for laying on the beach and looking or maybe getting your ankles wet. So that is one thing I think you need to really realize. Other things, you know, don't forget to go to Old San Juan and see the history there. Going to El Moro, go to the San Cristobal Castle, uh, going to see the cathedral, walking around and see the, the buildings that are all painted up. And it's just beautiful when you're there. You have that. And a lot of people, that's all they see because they come in on a cruise. So if you're not on a cruise, you have time. My next don't for you is don't just <laughs> go to Old San Juan. Explore the island. Even if you're only getting to El Yunque National Forest, where you can go hiking there. Don't go off the pass, FYI. Or if you want to go see some of the cave systems that are around the island, you can go see that. The beautiful beaches, the bioluminescent base, the towns. There's some small towns you can go visit and cities you can visit that are cute, that can be great for tourists. So there's a lot of stuff for you to see if you want to go around and explore. So don't skip out on Old San Juan, but don't think it's just Old San Juan when you come here. Another don't I have for you when you're here in Puerto Rico is if there is a baseball game going on and you can go watch one, don't pass up the chance to go watch baseball. That is the national pastime here. People are passionate about it. You'll still see people wearing Roberto Clemente Pirates jerseys throughout the island. I mean, baseball is Puerto Rico. So if you get a chance, go to a game, even if it's a small town game or something like that, go and watch. It's a fun thing to do. And you'll see kids playing baseball and adults playing baseball at some of the baseball diamonds around the island. You know what, maybe make a friend, throw the ball around and go hit some, but definitely don't pass up a baseball game. Now, another thing I think is important because Puerto Rico is a popular destination for travelers, uh, especially from the US because of the, the no passport thing. And one thing I wanna say is don't forget to book your accommodation early because there's plenty of accommodation, but the parts that you wanna stay in are close to the sites or in old San Juan or, or, or you know, here in Recall, and like there, there's places you're gonna go that you're gonna to wanna to be closer to the action. And you need to do that by booking ahead, especially if you're gonna come for a weekend because a lot of people just fly down here for the weekend. I mean, it's like a three, three and a half hour flight from Atlanta. I think it's like a four hour flight maybe from, from New York. So that's really, really cool. But tourists do come here, booking the accommodation earlier 
is a little bit more helpful. Also, book your book your car rental once you got things figured out, just to make your life easier, okay? Now, when you are driving around, one thing I wanna tell you is, don't expect to have great cell service everywhere, or even when you're not driving around, when you're just around towns and stuff, don't always expect to have, you know, 5G, 6G, 7G service and all this stuff. I haven't had any problems making phone calls, but getting the data sometimes can be iffy. So what I'd recommend is download your maps for where you're gonna go, screen capture your information from your Airbnb, whether it's the directions or the codes to get in, because that's a very popular way to get your information here. So have that in case you don't have signal. Also, don't worry if you're coming from San Juan, it's about a two and a half hour drive from San Juan from here. You can actually hire a car at the airport in San Juan that will bring you here and you can schedule a return. But I would want to get that kind of set up before you came. But yeah, rental cars aren't a problem here. Uh, but it is a nice little place to be. It is very much a tourist place to visit. Whether you're here for the surfing, whether you're here to go see the lighthouse to enjoy the food. Because yes, you have a lot of Puerto Rican food when you're here. You'll still get your mofongo. You'll still get your, 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 your lechon. You'll have that. And on the weekends, if you see one of those lechon kiosks, definitely grab some lechon by the pound, of course. Anyway, I wish you all the best. I'll say bye from here in Rincon.